Hey there. Welcome to the channel where you will find love, laughs, and DIYs. My name is Crafty Kathy, and I want to thank you for coming and spending your time with me today. If you like this video and you find value in it, give me a big thumbs up because it really helps me. And hey, subscribe to our channel and become a part of our family. We'd love to have you. Today I have for you some DIYs that I'm going to resell in my booth and I am using the Dollar Tree stickers and stencils. You will be amazed at how beautiful these turned out. So we got a lot to cover. Let's jump right into DIY number one. This first one is an old clock that I got at the thrift store and it's a pretty good size as you see. So the first thing that I was gonna do is flip it over and I have to get all the screws out of the back of it and then I just cleaned it up real good. This clock still works so it's gonna be the perfect DIY flip. I took the color Latte by Dixie Belle and it's last year's fall colors. I got it at my latest haul for only $10. And I gave the front of this coat, uh, gave the front of this clock two coats, and I just moved the hands around because they stuck up enough. I'm going to use the color Cashmere, which is also Dixie Belle, and I'm going to go around the outside really good. And I did like a stippling motion on those little pegs because that way I could get down in them easily. Two coats on the outside. Then I'm gonna use a stencil that I got from the Dollar Tree that says Farmer's Market, Local and Fresh. And I was really surprised and happy with the way that their stencils worked. I used Waverly's ink and I just slid it over the hands of that clock because like I said, they stuck up enough where you could kind of get around them and maneuver them and not have to take all the pieces apart. Now, when I'm doing any kind of stenciling, my favorite thing to do is use a stenciling brush and have very, very little paint on my brush. Very little. Like I daub it off right there on that white uh, paper before I even use it, you know. And then I just go up and down in a, like a stamping motion. And I find that's the best way to not get any bleeds at all. Then when I pulled it up, I was so pleasantly surprised to see how beautiful this stencil turned out. Somebody's really going to love this. Now, the A's and the R's don't cross enough. And so I used just a Sharpie to make that little simple mark in them to make it the way I wanted it. Now I'm going to use these Dollar Tree stickers, and they are farmhouse. And I love these polka dots on them that have a buffalo check. And it just so happens to be the same color as my paint. So I went around and I put these little dots all over this. There's bigger ones and smaller ones. I purposely put the big dots at 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6, and 9. That way I could fill that in in just a moment. But first I used some Dixie Belle Best Dang Wax to go all around the outside rim of this. And all you do is put a little bit on your brush, on your wax brush, and brush it on. And then I use some black wax from DIY. Now, I get this from Lori at Milton's Daughter. If you guys need any good paint or IOD supplies, I leave her information below. And she gives my subscribers 10% off. I'm going to use this beautiful transfer that came from the Dollar Tree. And it has pretty big numbers on it. So, I cut out the 12 the three, the six, and the nine, and I'm just gonna put them on there. And anytime you use a transfer, you peel the, the little backing off and you lay it down and you literally just rub it. These are so small, I did with my fingernails. And that's simply all you do. Now, all of these projects, I, to seal them, I'm using this Rust-Oleum um, Clear Matte two times and it's a sealer just to make sure that these stickers and transfers and all this that I'm using will stay on there and this is what we got hope you like it
We're going right into DIY number two. And for this one, we are gonna use these farmhouse stickers. And these are so beautiful. They've got the little red truck on them. They've got like homemade cows. They're just really cute. And then I'm gonna use these transfers that have large numbers on them. For this one, I got these two canisters at a yard sale for a dollar a piece. And if you ever price these, they're pretty expensive, even at thrift stores. So I cleaned them up real good, and I just simply cut a number sign and a one and a number sign and a two off of my transfers. We're going to lay the number one down on the larger of the two canisters, and you just lay it down with that top film. And like I said, these are so small, mostly I used my fingernail, but I did use that little tool that you can use. You can even use a credit card and you just kind of rub and it comes right off easily. And of course, when I'm done putting this down, I'm definitely gonna use that sealer, that Rust-Oleum Matte Clear. And then I did the number two on the smaller one. Then what I liked about these farmhouse stickers is this little like eucalyptus looking leaves that's on the side. And I thought that it would kind of finish off if I put it on the sides of the number one and the number two, and it did, it looked perfect. So I just stuck that on there and that is all I did for these. And I think they're simple and beautiful. I'm walking down the street on clouds instead of the concrete. I'm dancing through. Everything's about to come my way. Nothing can ruin my date. No matter what anyone does or say, I smile at fools. No, I don't care cause I am on my way. Up, and I won't stop, I won't slow down. Steady on my feet, I'm gonna ride. If you are enjoying this content, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel and give me a big like. That's the big thumbs up because it really helps me out on YouTube. And to subscribe, it's totally free. All you gotta do is hit that red subscribe button and there's a bell beside it. And when you click that bell, YouTube's gonna let you know every single time that I upload a video. And you know I want you in my family. So today I've got to talk about this. It is a heat it's a heat pad for neck and shoulders, and it's amazing. They sent it to me from Home Press. I'm going to leave the link down below in case any of you guys wants this. It's really cool. I'm showing you how this looks. It's like it hugs your neck and your shoulders, and I can't describe how good it feels. It's got five different levels of heat on it. It goes up to like 140-something degrees and all the way down to right around 100. And you just click this button button and when you push that button it goes down in the heat and gets cooler and as soon as I put this on it's just like I could fall asleep because it was so warm and cozy around my neck and then my husband also tried it out because he's having some problems with his rotator cuff so he put this thing on and ignore him with no shirt on it said you can do that and it actually did say the least amount of clothes that you wear like a thin shirt or whatever is even better and when he put it on he was like wow i already feel it that's what he's saying here and he's talking about how good it feels because it just like hugs in the right places i can't even describe that it just clicks together with one or two little buttons there and I'm telling you as soon as you put it on you just want to lay back and go to sleep it feels so good but I will leave the link in the description box below and if you guys want one of these all the information and the Amazon link is down below and I highly suggest that you try one of these if you're having neck or even like upper back problems so let's get into this next DIY let's go into number three I've seen these vases all over Pinterest and TikTok, and they're becoming really popular. And a company reached out to me and sent me one. They let me pick any one I want. I'm going to use the color Latte again to paint it. I picked this, I guess it's a little girl, and she's got a little bow in her hair. And I just thought it was very Victorian looking and very pretty. So I know the perfect Dollar Tree transfer that I want to use on her. But I gave her two coats of that beautiful color Latte. And I'm in love with that color, by the way. 
This is what she looked like when I finished her up. And then I just used my wax brush that I got from Milton's daughter and some white wax. And I went all around her with that and buffed it. And then I just used a lint-free rag to wipe off the excess. And that color is so pretty. And it's just like it was made for this vase alone. Now I'm gonna use these transfers from the Dollar Tree because they have French writing and she's just very Victorian and shabby chic looking to me. And so I thought this would be beautiful and I'm gonna put it right on her body. And these words were so pretty, I had to look them up to see what they meant. And the saying in French said, when two people are in love, words need not be spoken between their hearts and i just thought that was pretty and so i laid this down and did the transfer just like i did the others now there's little grooves there in her body so i used my fingernail to make sure that it came off there and surprisingly the dollar tree transfers come off pretty easy but look how pretty that turned out and then there was a couple of flowers that was also on this pack of transfers, and I'm going to put those on her also. I placed two of those on her back and one more on the front side. Then I simply just took some Spanish moss that I got when I was on vacation in Florida. I actually took it out of a tree. And I took four of these silky filling roses that I got from Ling's Moment off of Amazon. And I think that they're in my Amazon flowers. So I ended up just using three because things look better in threes. So let me know what you think about her. I think she's very shabby chic. We are moving right along into number four. We're almost finished already. And this is just like a little crate type thing that I got from the thrift store. I only paid a dollar for it. I was absolutely shocked that that's all I paid for it. So I just cleaned it up really good. And then I'm going to use that color latte. In case you notice, that's kind of a pattern in this video. I'm absolutely loving this color because it's just very... I don't know, kind of bland, but it just works if you don't like a lot of color, and I think it's beautiful. So I ended up giving this two full coats all over. And I picked up these transfers at the Dollar Tree not long ago, and they have a pumpkin on them, so you can use them for autumn. And they have all this beautiful farmhouse type stuff on them. They have the little cows and the milk can and just all kinds of beautiful stuff. So I cut out a little rolling pin on it that said thankful and I also cut out some words that was on it because the rolling pin said thankful and then I cut out the words for thee and then there was a little milk can that said farm life and so I made a little scene on one of the sides with those few transfers. I did the same thing. I peeled the backing off and you lay it down and this was so small I used my fingernail and these come off really easy. Sometimes you just have to lay them down and don't even scratch it and it comes right off. The only downfall, if there is one, to using these Dollar Tree stencils is you have to be really careful with them and hold it down steady with one finger because they'll kind of flip up really easily on, on you and then it can mess up your whole transfer. I learned that from my own experience. And then on the other side, I used the pumpkin and then there was two little rakes going in opposite directions and I thought that would be perfect to put on the other side. I also took a couple of those little little cows that were going in opposite directions and I thought they were really cute and I stuck them on there too. Then I took my floral foam 
and I just measured how much I needed and I cut it down and just laid it down in there. And then one of my subscribers had told me to use my Spanish moss before I put my flowers in there, which made perfect sense. I always did it the other way. I would put my flowers in and then try to stuff the Spanish moss in between them and it doesn't work really good that way. Now, she used to be a florist, and she says this is the way you do it. And hey, thank you so much for letting me know that, because this was so much easier. So, I put my Spanish moss down, and I kind of pushed it down over the side so that old green floral foam would not be showing through the little lines in the crate. And since we're doing a Dollar Tree video, I took some of these white dahlias that you get from the Dollar Tree, and I used four of them, and I cut them down, and I put one on each corner. Now, you guys know that when I'm doing my florals, the way that I explain to do them is if you put something on one side, you put it in the exact spot on the opposite side. As you see, I put one on each side because it matches up. Now, this is another dahlia bush, this really bright orange, and I thought that would be pretty to pop a couple of those in there, and I just used two of those. They went in the middle, and the lady that gave me that information about the Spanish moss also said that when you put it down first, you use less florals when you do it this way, and thank you so much. You were so right. Thank you for telling me that. Now, this is the lamb's ear from Walmart, and I just cut off a couple of the little sprigs. I didn't want the whole thing in there. And I stuck them in there. And then from Hobby Lobby, I bought this little thing of pumpkins. And it's got gourds in it. I think I ended up paying like four bucks with their 40% off. I stuck one of the leftover floral stems in the pumpkin and put it in. And to make a bow, all I did was make two loops, literally two loops. And then I tied it with my jute twine. And then I'm going to take another little piece of a um, floral, a little floral stick that one of the flowers was on, and I'm going to kind of stick it up inside that jute twine and just pop it down in the opposite side of where that pumpkin went. Now, I thought this finished the project, but those transfers that I put on were so small and it just wasn't enough for me. So this also had some beautiful flowers on it, some pretty black flowers and little bushes. And I cut those off and I put two on each side where the little, um, you know, lines go across the front of this crate. And so I thought that was pretty to stick it right in the center of both of those. Let me know what you think about this one. This is our last one. This is one of those little um, wall decals, I guess you would call it. It came from the Dollar Tree, of course. And I laid it down over this pumpkin form, and I kind of pushed with my fingers to get the pattern in which to cut out. And I laid it down, and I cut it out terribly because this full was so bright that it was kind of hard to cut out. But I did the best that I could. And so anyways, I cut each of these out and I put it down on the raised up places of the pumpkin. There was a little bit of excess kind of hanging over in a couple spots and I just took an X-Acto knife and cut that off and it didn't look too bad. And so then I used this color called Pumpkin Spice. And this is one of the Dixie Bells fall colors from last year also that I got for half off. And so I just took and put two coats all over this pumpkin. And you know, when I painted this, since it's that silvery foil, there was places of it kind of coming up and I wasn't so sure that I was gonna keep this. 
I used a little bit of that Dixie Belle Voodoo Gel Stain, and this is the color called Tobacco Road. And it's basically a lot like the Waverly Wax. It's just a gel stain. It has no smell. And so I kind of used it all over to see if I could make those places that were, you know, up on the wall decal to kind of pop up. And it didn't work too good. So then I got frustrated and I ended up taking all those decals off there and just painting that whole pumpkin, this pumpkin spice color. This is after I had taken everything off and I used that um, stain to make kind of shading on my pumpkin. And by doing that, I just, when the orange was wet, I ran that brown down over it and it creates like a shade that actually looks very real on this pumpkin. I'm gonna take this jute rope. I got this off of Amazon, but it's the kind that you get at the Dollar Tree. It's the same size. And I went around the outsides of these places that are not raised. I don't know why I didn't show that part. I'm sorry. And then I took some of the burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I made a simple figure eight bow. And I made the tails to almost look like it's like leaves on the top of the pumpkin just by cutting them very short. That's the only difference that I did. And I glued it down in the center, and then I stuck my bow right over the top of that. I'm going to use these beautiful fall stickers that have gnomes on them. I got one that has a little girl on it, and it says, Thankful and Blessed. And then, sure, she's holding a sign that says, Thankful and Blessed. And then the little boy, he just goes perfect with her. And then at the top, I put one of the stickers that said, Thankful and Blessed. And these are those kind of 3D stickers and then I stuck a little porcupine down on the bottom because he just seemed to go with the whole scheme of things. But I thought this was cute. And you know I can't finish a bow off without doing my little vintagey buttons. So I picked a big green button and a small orange one. And then down on the bottom, I stuck three little green buttons. I don't know. I just think it gives it a little finishing touch. I hope you guys like this one. It's the last one. If y'all stuck with me through this whole video, I just want to say thank you so much. I love each and every one of y'all. I hope that you enjoy the bloopers that are coming up. Bobby Joe is a wild cat today. <laughs>